This video is brought to you today by Ghost Tags. This is my own company that I started because I wanted a glow in the dark air tag case. These things are awesome. You can stick them on your backpack, on your dog's collar, and you will be able to find it at night. We've got two colors, blue and green. They've got great reviews. Go check them out. Links to them down below. Now on to the video. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, we're going to be talking about iOS 17 beta 2 because it's been out for a couple days now. I've gotten a better sense of how the performance is as well as the battery because these are the two things that you guys seem to care about most with these betas. Now, before we get to the performance and the battery, let's quickly talk about a few new features that were not being talked about on most channels. So let's talk about those now. One of the first things that I think a lot of people are going to be happy about is if you go into settings, scroll down to general and click on software update, you can now actually swipe to pull down to check for updates. So instead of having to back out and go back in, you can now just pull down just like every other app. This is an awesome change. I'm so glad that they were able to do this. Next up, let's talk about that micro location. So if you go into privacy and security and then location services, scroll all the way down to you see system services, click on that. You'll see something in here called micro location. I have no idea what it does. No one knows what it does but apparently turning it off doesn't really do anything. At least as far as we can tell, tests have been run to see if this was for name drop or that airdrop feature where it's real close, where you put two phones close to each other. So far, none of the tests have shown that it does anything if you turn it off. So I don't see any reason to have it on, at least right now, until Apple gives us some clarification on what it does. Seems kind of creepy right now. Another thing that I'm super happy about, if you try to haptic touch on anything, it is now faster if you make this one change. So. I don't know about you guys, but I hate how slow haptic touch used to be. But with iOS 17, you can now change that. So if you go into settings and you scroll to accessibility and then touch, you can now change haptic touch. If you click on this and go in, you can see there's fast, default, and slow. Default is how it's been and it's very annoying. It's so slow. It honestly kind of sucks. Fast makes it so much better. Remember on the old phones where you could press down on an app uh, to 3D touch? This feels almost as fast as that. It's still not as good, but it's very close. Uh, so I highly recommend switching that if you are on iOS 17. Now, real quick, I already mentioned the bugs that were fixed in the other video. I noticed two apps previously on beta one, uh, McDonald's and Waze. If you open those apps up and close them, nine out of 10 times, the location icon would stay up here and it would continue tracking you, I think, uh, in the background. It's very hard to kill it. The only way was to reboot the phone. Those have both been fixed in beta two. I have not had either one happen. I've tried to make it happen. Other people are reporting that this bug still exists, but I have not been able to make it happen. And I had it previously. Also the keyboard bug, like I said, 80% of the time it's fixed. 20% uh, of the time I will have issues where the keyboard doesn't show up or the send button is gone. Those are pretty much run of the mill bugs for a beta. Now the juicy part, let's talk about battery life and performance. Performance overall has been awesome. I have not had really any hiccups, no crashing, no respring's, nothing. So overall performance has been very good, uh, equal to, if not better than iOS 16. Now let's talk about battery because this is where things get really crazy. Beta one battery was not very good. Beta two battery has been awesome. I don't know what's going on here, but beta two for iOS 17, the battery life has been better on this one than iOS 16 for me, which is very strange to say. Other YouTubers are claiming it's not good, but it appears if you watch their videos closely, when they show their battery, uh, it seems like there's a glitch with one of their apps running in the background, you know, killing everything. With mine, it it's the opposite. Look at this. I'm on a phone call all night, every single night, and you can see no usage. That's crazy. In the past with iOS 16, it would use my battery up all night. Even when plugged in, it would just, there'd be a blue bar all the way up here all night, every night. And that was super annoying. iOS 17 seems to have fixed that. And not only that, but I take a walk almost every day. It's about the same, you know, four miles. And I've been logging how much battery my phone uses for years now when I take this walk. And with iOS 17 beta two, I noticed that it only took between 10 and 13% of my battery during the walk. That is much lower than previously. It used to be 15 to 20% with iOS 16 and beta one, I think it was around 15 or 16% if I'm not mistaken. So with beta two only taking about 13, 12 to 13% on average, uh, that is great for those walks. That just tells me that iOS 17 beta two battery life is great. So let's talk about this because if I'm saying the battery life has been great for me, but another YouTuber is saying that it's bad for them, what are you guys gonna do? Are you gonna believe me or are you gonna believe them? Well, you can clearly see from my battery log here how it's been last 10 days. 
I mean, you can take a look for yourself. Obviously, I've been using the phone more, and on the days where I install a beta, it's obviously going to have more usage. So it's hard for a YouTuber to show on these graphs, but so far, in my opinion, uh, beta 2 has been awesome with battery life, which, by the way, was installed on Wednesday here. So you can see I've been on my phone quite a bit, using almost the same amount of battery as last week, which is interesting because... I was not using my phone nearly as much on those days. So keep that in mind. You can literally see the proof right here. But with that said, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe me or the other YouTubers? I think that you should believe both of us. Uh, the other YouTubers are probably talking about a glitch that they're having. If you look at their battery list usage, especially for the last 24 hours, it's probably not going to look like this because they have a glitch with another app, which can happen on beta software. If you do indeed decide to install this beta, just know there could be glitches. But if everything goes smoothly like mine, you won't have those glitches and your battery life will be possibly even better than iOS 16. The following betas we should see on the week of the 4th of July, probably the day or two after the 4th of July will be the next beta, possibly even the public beta. If I were you and you have a developer account and you're not on a beta, but you kind of want to, this beta is a good one to hop on. Public beta will be coming out in a couple weeks. So keep that in mind. You may want to wait for the public beta because that one's usually a little bit better on battery life as well as glitches. There's less glitches in general with the public beta. Apple doesn't want to get a bunch of public beta people glitched out. So hopefully this video has helped you out. iOS 17 beta 2 has been a rock star for me. Of course, there are glitches. That's to be expected. But they have been ironed out almost to the point of a non-issue for me since beta 1. I can't wait to see what beta 3 brings, but we'll have to see. If you like these videos that are short, sweet, and to the point, be sure to hit this video with a big thumbs up and subscribe. Share the video with your friends. I try to make these videos as short and condensed as possible so that you don't have to sit through a bunch of ads. A lot of other YouTubers try to make their videos hit that eight minute mark so they can add a, an ad in the middle. They can't do that if it doesn't hit eight minutes. Keep that in mind next time you watch one of their videos. That's all I got. Thumbs up, subscribe. Peace. Thank you.